Good evening, everybody. We'd like to go and call this regular Destin City Council meeting to order. If you please rise to the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Mr. Marler. Thank you, Mayor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we ask you to watch over things we do tonight in the city. Let them be fair and just for all parties. Also watch over each and every one of us as we go home to our families tonight. Keep us and our families safe. Watch over our troops here and abroad, for they're what keep this country and this state and this city safe. We ask this in his name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Marler. Uh, before we do item number one, I do want to uh, make every, draw everyone's attention, that is, to uh, the comments from the audience that has been updated per our resolution, and that is allowing people at the end of the session to speak. Still, of course, it's the public's opportunity to speak, but by resolution, the uh, citizens get at, uh, five minutes, and before we had three, and so I want to make sure the public knows they have five minutes to speak per resolution. So if you are do not, we have two public hearings tonight, which people can speak during that, but at public opportunity to speak on council propositions, six items six through 22, that's when you'll have a three minute limit. But at the end of the tonight's comments from the audience, you have five minutes. So I wanna make sure everyone knows that before we get to that. All right, moving on to item number one, we actually have, um, I, th I call it an honor to have uh, some amazing guests in our audience. Uh, Mr. John Thomas, who's the executive director of the Florida League of Mayors, um, involved, are you the same for the League of Cities as well? Also for the Florida League of Cities, Jenny Anderson, who is executive director of everybody. I think she just, uh, keep, she's the administrative queen, keeps everything blowing and going. Uh, and it's just an amazing honor for us as a city to have you come. Uh, but I know you're here, and I think there's a gentleman here from Business Watch, perhaps. We're honored to have you as well. And I'd like to, if y'all can come forward, we're gonna do a presentation. Is that better? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm John Thomas. I'm the executive director of the Florida League of Mayors, also with the Florida League of Cities. Jenny Anderson is with the Florida League of Mayors and the Florida League of Cities as well. And we're here to give you some money, which, uh, which is sort of a, a, a switch in some ways. Uh, the Florida League of Cities uh, on, and the Florida League of Mayors, in addition uh, with Florida Business Watch, which, which these two gentlemen represent, partnered about a year ago to put together what we call City Catalyst Grants. And they are grants that are to be used for community involvement, community betterment, and community support. And this year, uh, over 70 applicants for the, uh, the City to Catalyst grants for the Florida League of Mayors was, was uh, accepted. And uh, Destin was one of the winners. And we're excited about that and here to present uh, the check to the City Council. Uh, we're also fortunate to have Mayor Ponder on our Board of Directors. Uh, so mem uh, membership does, uh, does have its benefits. And uh, we're excited, to, along with uh, Mr. Sheets and Mr. Ogles, who may want to offer some comments as well. Just raise Charlotte and say how much of an honor it is to be here. You had a lot of competition. Your grant was uh, very interesting and intriguing from my stomach with, with your community garden. I want to come back again and see how it's doing. Uh, but we're happy to be here to be part of this, and congratulations. And I'm up from Sarasota. I vacation here every summer. I appreciate your town and how well run it, it is and, and wish you well running in the legislature. I enjoyed serving with uh, Representative Miller for almost a decade. So on behalf of Florida Business Watch and Florida League of Mayors, we'd like to present this fake oversized check to you. <laughs>
Yeah, what this was for, just so everyone knows, I don't think he got a chance to say it, is um, Business Watch partnered with the Florida League of Cities to do this catalyst grant, and they didn't get a large sum of money, but they were trying to find low, uh, pro low income or low budget projects within cities that made great impact. And so Lindy had gotten with, I guess it's Lisa Firth and some others from the community center, and they do a community garden. And most of the time what they do, it's only a short term garden. And they came up with a budget for $900. They could actually uh, build an eight by eight um, gardening little facility at the community center and they can grow things throughout the whole year instead of just once a year. And so they're gonna do things for Thanksgiving and Mother's Day and different things like that. And so we were one of five grants that were picked out of 70. Um, we were not the highest award winner. I think the highest was $1,500. So you can see they're not large grants, but we got 900 to help fund that. So. Um, it was kind of cool that we got distinguished for that and to have them come and then present it's outstanding. So congratulations city staff, city council for that award. Job well done by everybody. Uh, next up item number two is a proclamation proclaiming the month of October 2015 as community planning month. I think we have Ashley Grana, it's Ken Galander coming down and Hank Willard. All of y'all please join me out front please. All right, this is the, uh, it's a city of Destin proclamation proclaiming the month of October 2015 as community planning month. And I'm sure most of us in this room, if you've done anything in the city with planning of any aspect whatsoever, you've met either one or all three of these gentlemen or received an email from them or a phone call or some sort of direction. Uh, here's the proclamation proclaiming the month of October 2015 as community planning month, whereas change is constant and affects all cities, towns, suburbs, counties, boroughs, townships, rural areas, and other places, and whereas community planning and plans can help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live, and whereas community planning provides an opportunity for all residents to be meaning meaningfully involved in making choices that determine the future of their community, and whereas the full benefits of planning requires public, <coughs> excuse me, public officials and citizens who support, understand, and demand excellence in planning and plan implementation, and whereas the plan of excuse me, the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month throughout U the United States of America and its territories and whereas the, pl the American Planning Association and its professional institute, the American Institute of Certified Planners, endorse National Community Planning Month as an opportunity to, to highlight the contributions, sound planning and plan implementation make to the quality of our settlements and environment and whereas we highlight the role of planners as visionaries who work to create sustainable communities and to improve the quality of life for our citizenry. citizenry. We recognize there are many valuable contributions and extend our heartfelt, heart, heartfelt excuse me, thanks, that's awful, for the continued commitment to public service by these professionals. I can't even speak, I got some more coke, I'm tired, I guess. Now therefore, I, Mayor Mel Pinder, on behalf of the Destin City Council, do hereby proclaim October 2015 as Community Planning Month in the City of Destin in conjunction with the celebration of the National Community Planning Month. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of jovial. Mr. Galander, are you going to speak tonight on this behalf? Awesome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council, City Manager, for uh, this opportunity for us to work here. I'm a planner by professional training and whatnot, but it's these two gentlemen here in our planning division that are the backbone of our community and getting those current planning and our future planning uh, work done for you all. So uh, Mr. Ashley Graner is our planning manager and Mr. Hank Woolard is our planner. Uh, there is a theme for this month. It's uh, healthy communities, healthy people. And we're kind of going to do something different. We're, uh, we have an uh, email, planning at cityofdestin.com. And what we want to do is for the community to provide us some imagery, some images of Destin and what makes this place a healthy community and makes it for healthy people. And we're going to post those on Facebook with the help of Doug uh, with public information and put them on our website. So we're just wanting to kind of get that out there and at planning at cityofdestin.com. It's an email and then we'll, I'll submit those to Doug. And, uh, but we also want to recognize our volunteer, our local planning agency. And that's a group of appointed uh, citizens that make uh, 
also uh, supporting staff and supporting the city council and uh, great planning for this community. So just wanted to recognize them. So thank you very much. As y'all know, they do an amazing job, and uh, um, uh, y'all have dealt with them. They've, they've done work with Greg hand in hand, but you know we don't always get a chance to honor them for the work they put in to kind of con you know, continuously have an outlook for the vision of our city and our community. And just for the sake of giving honor and honors due, would y'all just help uh, just honor these gentlemen for what they do for our city? Thank you all again for that. Uh, next up, uh, item number three, approval of minutes for September 8, 2015 regular city council meeting. City council? Motion yeah. to approve. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Motion to approve. Mr. Wood is the first. Is there a second? Second, Mr. second by Mr. Trammell. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's call the vote. Okay, motion passed unanimous, seven to zero. Okay. Item number four is a public hearing. It's first reading of ordinance 15-07-CC, which amends the city of Destin code of ordinances by creating a new chapter, 19.5, Article 9, Regulation of Businesses Offering Passenger Vehicles for Hire. Mr. Miller, please read by title. Yes, sir. Ordinance number 15-07-CC by title is an ordinance of the city of Destin, Florida, establishing regulations for passenger vehicles for hire providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances chapter, 19.5, traffic and motor vehicles, article four, titled regulation four. of business offering passenger vehicles for hire, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-123, title, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-124, intent and purpose, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-125 exemptions, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-127 license required for all businesses offering passenger vehicles for hire, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-128 standards of operation for passenger vehicle for hire business license, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinance requirements, uh, excuse me, code of ordinance section 19.5-129 minimum insurance requirements, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-130 vehicle standards for passenger vehicles for hire, providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances section 19.5-131 driver standards for passenger vehicles for hire, Providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances, section 19.5-132, license fees. Providing for the creation of a new code of ordinances, section 19.5-133, administration. Providing for enforcement, providing uh, for penalties, providing for incorporation into the code of ordinances, providing for conflicting provisions, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. The ordinance is before you for consideration on first reading. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, Mr. Casella, can you give us a little background before we have uh, public input? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This issue uh, first came, I think, this approximately August, September of last year as it relates to uh, exploring the regulation of passenger uh, vehicles for hire. Uh, and what you have before you is the uh, byproduct of uh, staff research, we met with a number of the stakeholders, uh, looked at uh, what has been done throughout the state of Florida of different entities, uh, this was presented um, to you, I believe, in the August time frame, where you all gave us some comments and directions. Subsequently, was scheduled to the LPA, the local planning agency. Uh, they heard testimony from a number of the individuals in the in the uh, industry. Uh, they had, um, I wasn't in attendance, but my understanding, a pretty spirited discussion at the meeting. 
relating to a number of issues and we have tried to highlight those comments to you. So this is being presented uh, during for first reading uh, for you to, to consider. Um, I sense there's still a number of individuals uh, pro and con this that would like to provide input to you before you make a final decision for first reading. So it's presented uh, consistent with what you had asked us to back in the uh, August time frame, um, and you have also received input from the uh, local planning agency. Thank you, Mr. Casella. Um, because this is a public hearing, I'd like to first first to hear first from the public on this item. I know uh, Captain Eller, I know, would like to speak, and then any others after Captain Eller, uh, if you have any comments for or against this ordinance, please come forward, and um, as we always do, please state your name for the record. Captain Eller? It's lazy. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, honorable members of the council, thank you for the opportunity to speak. As, as always, it's a, an experience. Over the past several weeks, I have uh, been reading and rereading the ordinance, and I feel compelled to bring it to the council's attention that there are at least two what I consider glaring faults in the, uh, in the ordinance faults that could drastically impact some of the operators who are operating now under existing laws. One is the age of the vehicle requirement, which in the ordinance is 10 years. This was probably a mistake, in my opinion, and it could possibly, if enacted, put someone out of business. Now, this is something we cannot do. The city cannot arbitrarily, in my opinion, put someone out of business who is following the current rules and regulations. It would be wrong, it would be immoral. My suggestion is to either highly modify that section of the ordinance or do away with it altogether, with the caveat that any vehicle used as a taxi, regardless of age, as long as it can pass a safety inspection by a certified mechanic, should be allowed to operate. Now, <clears throat> in this day and age, Technology and technology and, and, and metallurgy and on and on and on and on has far surpassed what it was even 20, 30 years ago. The vehicles nowadays will go 100, 150,000 miles without a big problem. As a pioneer in this industry, there were three things that I was highly interested in that was steering, brakes and tires. If your engine quits and your steering works, you pull over to the side of the road and stop and call a tow truck. But you've got to have those other three things in order to do that. We have some good certified mechanics here in town. And here again, my suggestion is that if the vehicle can pass the certification roadworthiness, then it should be allowed to operate. Maybe at a later date, the council may want to consider modifying this um, section of the ordinance to the effect that these vehicles be grandfathered in at the present time and somewhere down the road, let's say that if a, a vehicle needs to be replaced, that it should be replaced with a newer vehicle. That's strictly up to the council. But I highly suggest that we do not enact the 10-year rule. As, it, as like I said, it could easily put someone out of business and that's not, that's not what the business of the city is. Bitty this business is to promote business, not to do away with it. The other thing that I have, uh, I, I think may be up for consideration is I think maybe the insurance, the overall insurance may be a bit high. 
all businesses, regardless of what it is, should have adequate insurance. Now, the state doesn't address this a lot. So therefore, I think it would be up to the city to determine what would be adequate insurance. I can't do that. Times change, locations change, different venues in different cities require different insurance requirements. Now, as you all know, a taxicab medallion in Manhattan on the aftermarket is a million dollars. Million dollars on the aftermarket, if you can get one. Kind of like fishing permits. There are no more. Then there will never be any more. So it's a very sought after thing. And that's how, that's how I feel about the, the taxicab medallion in Destin. That should be a prized, coveted thing because it shows the world that you're doing it right. It shows your, your, your writing public that they're gonna get treated fair. They're not gonna be overcharged in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So here again, this, this, this medallion should be very, very coveted. Let's do away with the age requirement and look real, real close at the uh, amount of insurance requirement. Only the city can decide what is adequate. Any questions? You have any questions of Cap Miller? Yeah. Thank okay. you, Cap Miller. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Anyone else what we should speak for or against this ordinance? On first reading, please come forward. State your name for the record. Can you, I'm sorry, can you hit the, the, the kind of oval button on top of the speaker? Can you, hit, can you hit the little oval button on that sort of, yeah, there you go. My Thanks. name is Lee James. Thank you, Mr. James. Um, there were a couple of concerns that I had, and, and actually this is the first time I've ever addressed a, a body of government, but um, this is a, a something that I, I'm a, a taxi cab owner here in Destin. I'm a native of Destin. I was born here. Um, there's a couple of things that that um, <clears throat> that were a little bit disturbing in this, and one is the ten-year policy. And man, I don't know if I can cap what Captain just said. I mean, yeah, that pretty much sums it all. But um, you know, if we have to look at, at something like this with just taxi cab service, where we're carrying just three, four, maybe six people around in a in a van, um, <clears throat> we might need to look at our transportation for our children, because I know that we have school buses that are much older than ten years old. And I know that if the vehicle's well maintained, and or let's say, for instance, we wanted to take on something really articulate and use 1950 taxis from old New York, and we fixed them up and utilized something like that, people would love that. Mm -hmm. But then this ordinance wouldn't even allow you to have that type of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the, if, if I have a business plan that says I'm going to use a vehicle on a four-year cycle, so now, instead of me being able to buy an eight-year-old vehicle, I've got to buy a six-year-old vehicle, which makes my cost go up considerably for a two-year younger vehicle because I want to fall in that 10-year mm -hmm. cutoff period. So there's a lot of things about the 10-year thing that I think that should just go away. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the, um, the industrial, uh, the, having a, a place of business for the industrial park, and. And, and I'm sure that if we apply some common sense to this, that we can look at this and say, wait a minute, We're, a taxi company has to have a place of business. Is this for our customers to come in and pick out what type of cab they want? I've never heard of such. As a matter of fact, in, in um, almost the full decade that I've been involved here, I've not seen one person or heard of one person that says, hey, can I come by your place of business? That's just never happened. Um, and, in, and in the event that, let's say this does pass, then, then we need to start looking at plumbers, electricians. Um, actually, there's some doctors that do not have doctor's office that work as hospitalists at Santa Rosa Beach. These guys don't have offices. They just go from hospital to hospital to hospital. Um, and, and that would be something that I think that um, 
that would have some long-term effects because somebody might be able to use that in relation say, well, wait a minute, we want plumbers to have an office. You know, if then it's an independent guy just getting out, getting started, that's, that can be difficult to do. It seems like the little business guy is the one that's being cut out of this. And now, stepping back and looking at the big picture of this, now I start to see there's a little bit of um, rouge going on here. Um, because now we see that there's only a couple of people that are we're even having this conversation for. There's only a couple of entities, and those entities already qualify for every bit of that you're offering for. So they're not saying, hey, that we should do this too, but it's already been done. They're already set up for this, the, the individuals that would like to see this pass. All of the taxi um, companies that I've spoke to um, are all game for having the correct insurance, for everybody, for everybody having safe vehicles. All of these are concerns of ours as well. But I don't think that we need to overlap more government on top of more government. You know, if we already have the county making sure, and the county does regulate this, the tax collector's office, and as a matter of fact, if you don't reapply for your license on time, they'll give you a phone call themselves. They'll actually call you up and say, hey, it's time, you know, you forgot to renew or, or whatever. Um, but they do regulate it. And also our good friends at Northwest Florida Regional do the same thing. You can't um, run a taxi through there unless you have, you know, certain types of coverages, et cetera. Um, it's, um, it's difficult for me to understand why, uh, or what the difference would be from, you know, a charter boat that's um, 20 years old that people go out and catch fish on that are just as safe as one that's one year old. So I'm sorry I didn't have uh, a lot more details and, and I appreciate you guys entertaining me, letting me uh, speak about this. And, and there's a thousand things I'd like to say, but I'm a little bit too nervous, I think, to say that. anything else. But um, just from a very, from a small businessman perspective, I know that just layering these on top of each other is just gonna create a very slippery slope. Because once I know that we pass these, and as the elite owners in the taxi industry in Northwest Florida decide that they would like to add even more onto, onto this, more legislation, then that's exactly what we'll see because this is gonna soften the blows. I mean, we all see how it starts out as a little and then it turns into a snowball effect. And I don't want to end up like New York where you have to pay a million dollars for, for a medallion. Um, we all know how that all even came about and it was pretty corrupt. And I, and I just hope we're not headed in that same direction where just a few that have a little bit of money in this industry are going to manipulate our elected officials because this will, you know, everybody will be looked at the, you know, looked at this and there's probably three or 400 of us and that's all, but word of mouth, you know, we get to carry a lot of folks around. And you know, when the four months are over and all the tourists go home, you know, our business still has to abide by those same rules and it's still costing us a lot of money. But when locals need those low prices, and I know there's a few guys in here that we have the lowest prices in Destin period. And these other entities that I'm referring to are the highest here. And if you compared an apple to an apple, you would see that, well, if it really comes down to the bottom line of being money and it being safe, um, what well, we win in money and safety, everybody has that. And if we, if we have to go through some sort of um, inspection, I think that's fair. Everybody should be safe. Everybody be, should be charging a fair price. Our prices, we will clearly post them in the window. It's up to the individual, drunk or not, whether they get in that cab or not. It's up to the consumer's right. It's their decision as to one, whether they want to use our services or not. Don't take the power out of their hands. Let them make the choice. They may, they may rather save $5 with someone that has a 10-year-old vehicle than spend the extra $5 with one that's got that's two or three years younger. And that's all I've got. Mr. James, thank you. Do I have any, any questions, questions? Mr. James? Okay, thank you, sir, very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against, please, sir? Come forward, state your name for the record. <laughs> Public hearing. My name is Justin Jackson. I'm the owner of Jay's Checker Cab. Um, I'm for this ordinance. Number one, I operate at the Northwest Florida Regional Airport as much as anybody else does. Um, I'm, the reason I'm for this ordinance is we need higher standards. I have been in this business for three years. I've watched it decline seriously, very much so. We've got cars out there now that are running with 
just a topper that say taxi. There's no rates posted. There's no meters in the car. You get in the car and you drive down the road a mile and a half. You've got a guy driving. You don't know if he's got any credentials or not, period. He goes, man, it's 40 bucks. Drunk or not, I look up and I say, $40, and I went a mile. I don't think so. Took a lady to the airport this morning. Picked her up off a of sand print circle. The meter read 30, no, excuse me, $40.25 from San Francisco Circle to the front door of the airport. That's at $2.25 a mile, metered. No problems. She handed me her money and she went on about her way. I can't tell you that I have had more customers than not say, oh my God, you're the first taxi that we've gotten in here that's had a meter in it. The only type of companies that I know in this area that are metered are all of Pensacola taxis, they don't have a choice. They have to do it, regardless if they work the airport or they work downtown, they have to have it. That is the biggest thing I would say that this needs to be pushed, is every taxi company have meters. There also needs to be a distinguishment between vehicle for hires, whether you're a taxi, shuttle, limousine, or shuttle bus. Because right now, there is no difference. And believe me, there's a difference in insurance too. I pay $500 a month in insurance for taxi insurance, not shuttle insurance. Half of the people that work at the airport are shuttles. They're sitting in a taxi queue. Wrong answer. That is not the proper insurance for a taxi. That is my, those are my, those are my concerns there. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Anybody have a question, Mr. Jackson? Okay, Mr. Marlow, please. Yes, sir. You said meters. Um, Yes, so that brings up a good question. Mm -hmm. I know uh, in law enforcement for the radar detectors, they have to be certified at certain times. Uh, Correct. Is that required? I mean, I know that. Yes, you have to go through the Florida Department of Agriculture to get those certifications. Um, they actually have facilities in Pensacola. Yellow Cab does them. And American Top Flight Taxi certifies those meters. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Ms. Ranchwell? Yes, Thanks. Do they also do the calibration, or is that up yes. to you no. personally? No, ma'am. They do all of it. They do all the calibration, all the all the settings. Okay. How how often do you have to have that checked? It's um, depending on the amount of vehicles you have. Mm -hmm. It's based on that. I currently only run one, um, so I do mine every two years. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ms. Ramswell. Yep. Anyone else? Mr. Foreman. Yes, sir. One of the things that I've heard mentioned uh, by previous speakers is the fact that they have rate cards. Correct. Where they have the destinations from this point to this point, and then they have a rate on that rate card. Correct. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. I, I don't agree. I don't disagree with that. What I don't agree with is is Joe Blow and Taxi Company A pulls up and there's nothing on the car. Period. Not a phone number, okay. not a name, not nothing telling you what they have. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Appreciate your time. Thank yes, you. sir. Anyone else like to speak for or against this ordinance? Please come forward. Uh, okay, yep. Mr. Oh, yes, sir. And Mr. Wu will get you next in the back. Of course, thank you, Nova. State your name for the record, please, sir. My name is Jerry White. Um, I'll keep it short. Y'all let me speak last time. Your taxi meter, if you're in Okaloosa County, is worthless because there is no one to check your meter. If you get in a cab that has a meter, run, don't walk. Because you can reach behind the meter and turn it up as fast, as high as you want it to be. So I don't, in Niceville, they do require meters and the police department do it. Other than that city, they don't. I hate to have another layer of regulation. My company, I can get on Eglin Air Force Base. I can get on Herbert Field. I can pick up and drop off at the airport. I mentioned briefly last time, and I'll do it quickly. I understand the concern about people paying too much for taxis, but none of that's addressed in this. Uh, Mr. Foreman mentioned about a rate card. If you require people, which the state already does, to have the proper insurance, it's already done. Have a rate card or post it on your window so people can walk up and see it. That's understandable. And having a vehicle that's operational and a background check, that's understandable. 
but the idea that that's going to save people money because you have a newer vehicle or it's going to save people there's nothing in here that saves anybody money by charging five hundred dollars more for a license fee that i already paid for the county and the airport isn't going to make me lower my rates it would probably make me raise my rates probably i'll keep them the same i'm 38 dollars by the way to the airport not 40 25 i don't have a meter on you know, my cards i guarantee you the lowest price i've been in business 11 years more than 50 miles from here so i also have been here forever or 56 years you know now i know i look 28 but i'm 56. but I don't know how to say it. I, I think I don't mean to use the word ruse, but we always run into this with a couple of new companies come in, a little flashier, a little nicer tie, a little nicer shirt, and they want to control the competition. You know, you have that option. It's called free enterprise. It's like me going to New York and get a piece of cheesecake, best piece of cheesecake I ever had, and then coming back and say, you know what? If you're going to eat at Dewey Destin's, we pass the law, you got to have this cheesecake. Well, that's what free enterprise is. I do agree with Justin and some of these other guys. It's, it's disheartening when you pull up. I don't do a lot of sit in front of bar business. I do mainly airport shuttle business. But when you pull up and you see a, 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 a competitor in front of you that doesn't really have signage properly, you can look and it's kind of a little beat up and go, this guy ain't got commercial insurance. You, you see that. But you gotta take a little of the good with the bad. But the customer also sees that. Your customers are not. Uh, they're intelligent enough to make a decision. They know if this ordinance passes as it is, like today, I picked up three of my regular customers. I, I showed y'all pictures of my vehicles before. I would not be able to pick up my customers. Once I pick them up at the airport and drop them off in Destin, now I cannot pick them back up and take them back to the airport if this is passed as it is. I can pick up on Hurlburt. I can pick up on Eglin. I can pick up at the airport but I can't pick up at the Emerald Grand. I think this needs a little more thought. Captain Utter was absolutely right on about the 10 years. It's just not a strong, the ordinance is over in some areas, I think, and under in some areas, but very little. Have a rate card, background check, but then who's gonna do that? Then that falls on city staff. You're gonna have to hire people to do that. And the next step, uh, last time I was here, I mentioned about Mr. Casella, maybe getting with the airport guys, and now our airport director has resigned. So that's kind of in limbo. We don't have a new airport director. So, you know, that might be a hiatus. I would like to see another six months. Wait six months, think about it, get some more input. I saw the people that, that gave input and they touched on things. Um, it's just not time. There's not a big hue and cry except for, gee, cabs are charging too much money. Again, you haven't heard of a bunch of taxi wrecks or instances coming up. We're going into our off season. Our bigger problems in this industry are gonna be Uber and Lyft and car ride services that are 56% last quarter of all rides weren't even taxis or shuttles. So we're already fighting the bull. So I wish y'all would punt this for about six months ask for some more input, maybe put up uh, a couple workshops and let's fine tune it a little. Cause the $500, sure I can pay the $500. And then it's going to get in a mechanic to check cause I don't have any problem back here. I've already done that. I get on the military bases, hello. So um, if I can get on the airport after 9-11 and the military base after 9-11, I'll be able to pick up a demo grant without another layer of, of bureaucracy. And I, I uh, you ladies and gentlemen have so much on your plate. This, this is just, it just seems like something, but for some reason why this even came up, um, you haven't had a problem. It's like, I understand being proactive, but it just doesn't seem like this should reach to this level that we got to pass this ordinance now. We got a problem out here. We got to control these taxes. That's all. And uh, if it hadn't been, and I read it, and I may have read it wrong, but obviously it doesn't, make any sense to have to have a uh, location in the industrial park or mixed use to operate a taxi company. Like Lee said, no would it for a plumber or an electrician. It's not a company where 
people are coming to your business. You're going to them. So I just, I wish y'all would consider taking a little time to let this, and maybe let us all that have spoken, good and bad, work with your city staff to come up with something a little better, a little easier. Thank you, Mr. White. Any other questions, Mr. White? Okay. Mr. Foreman, please. Yes, sir. As a business entity, do you have an address for purposes of, let's say, licensing and state and that sort of thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. It's my home address. I live on Okaloosa Island. I had to go to the Island Authority and get a waiver to operate a business out of my home. But my business is my taxi cab, I so that's my office. So you do have to have a physical address, and, and we all should. And for tax purposes also? Everything. Yes. for your uh, county license so we do have a lot you've got to have an address but it just it doesn't have to be in an industrial park or anything like that okay. yes sir thank you mr foreman anyone else okay thank you mr white Appreciate thank you all it. absolutely mr Wu, next make sure i have one more ahead of you sir then you can come after you have one more person then. okay good evening council mayor thank you for the opportunity in following the issues, um, I've had some experience with transportation for hire contracts. With these new hotels coming up and new condos being built, you're going to need something to represent this city. And in public conveyance, that's going to be the taxi cabs and the transit buses. It has to look nice, it has to have an efficient service. In dealing with this new ordinance the enforcement is tantamount because you're going to have operators out there that will be under the radar and not adhere to any of these ordinances i like a city permit because it states that it has uh, the vehicle has gone through an inspection and meets city requirements and before i leave um, I was at uh, one of the gas stations and a taxi pulled up, had a 30A sticker on the taxi. This van was something I would not be seen driving myself. It was in poor condition and uh, in striking up a conversation with him, he was quite proud of it because it had shag carpet inside and beanbag chairs and curtains on the windows. Um, I thank enforcement uh, for future uh, references since this city is growing. We've got another big hotel coming. Uh, I think we need this, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. We appreciate it very much. Sir? Yes, sir. Please uh, just state your name for the record, please, sir. I'm Brent Scott. I'm the owner of Seabree Taxi. I opened up in 2000, in March 2000, almost 16 years ago. Uh, we need regulations in this town. Uh, there are a lot of unlicensed cab drivers who drive in vehicles, even some with DUIs. In the past three years, I can tell three people killed by cab drivers. One on Eglin Parkway, the other one right in front of AJ's, and the, can't recall the third one, two on Eglin Parkway, okay? Uh, those three cab drivers were not insured. When I mean, you drive a taxi cab without the proper taxi cab insurance, you're basically driving without insurance because the insurance companies will not cover that accident. Uh, there are cab vehicles out there that they tape paper signs to the door, okay? No name, just put on tax, it just says taxi. No phone number, who they're getting in with. Uh, I can tell you right now, there's four uh, cab drivers in Destin right now that uh, have been convicted of sexual, sexual uh, crimes, okay? Uh, I have parents all the time that have me pick up their kids and take them to events. They don't know nothing about me. I've been licensed in, in Oakland County for 16 years, and a lot of them do not have, we need strong uh, regulations. 
A uh, couple things I don't agree with would be the age of the vehicle. Mine's a 2009, okay? I'm not really concerned about my vehicle, uh, but the, there's a lot of good vehicles out there that's under 10 years old that still are very good vehicles. Uh, and the location, uh, I've, in 16 years, I've never had a customer ask to come to my location, <laughs> my business location. Uh, that alone will put out put a lot of cab drivers out of business. Uh, we just need good regulations that enforce that you have insurance, you have permits uh, to be a cab driver, and definitely background checks. Uh, two weeks ago, I'm a cab driver for local business. It happens to be a bar. They use nobody but me. Two weeks ago, I ran. I'm the. I take care of the transportation for this uh, establishment. Two weeks ago, an Uber driver was sitting at the front door ordering Jack and Coach waiting for his phone to ring. Okay? Uh, I asked him to leave. <laughs> uh, I just hope you all look at the regulations that we need. Uh, don't be influenced by anybody and just come up with good regulations that can be enforced. Okay. Good. Any okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it so you. much. Anyone else wish to speak for or against this ordinance? Please, sir, yes, come forward. State your name for the record. No prep, Mr. Ramswell, I'm sorry. Do you have a question of the gentleman? No. I'm sorry about that. No, oh, okay, you're first. Okay, good, you got it. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, my name is Stan uh, Nikolov from OK Taxi. Good evening, City Council, ladies and gentlemen, City Manager. Uh, I definitely would like to say that I agree with the same thing that the gentleman just mentioned, as well with Jackson. Uh, they already mentioned most of the things, so uh, I'll be pretty brief. Um, I'll start with one of the things. Um, as far as the, some of the people mentioned earlier that some of the companies are trying probably to just get rid of the competition in the town. Uh, when we were doing over that uh, ordinance with Hank, uh, there was actually uh, the offer the insurance to be 500,000. And uh, when me and Hank were talking about that, I offered him actually to lower it down to 300,000 since most of the shuttles that are working on the airport are having exactly that coverage. Now our company and a few other companies are having uh, insurance of $1 million. Yeah. For us it would be perfect to have only 1 million. This means it will be only us and a few other companies and this will be the only companies working in town. So this is one of the things just to show that actually we are not trying to remove the competition. This is why I actually personally ask Hank to lower the limit of the insurance to 300,000. That way we'll be able to keep all the companies that are having commercial insurance, and this is a lot of companies on the airport, and they're doing the things in a very good way. Most of them are doing uh, everything actually, I would say, exceptional way. Uh, that was one of the things that we just decided to do in order everybody who is willing to have a commercial insurance to be able to get one since the one from 1 million it's extremely hard to get uh, at the first point. Now, um, another thing that I would like to address as far as the background checks, uh, definitely, uh, these things uh, needs to stay, uh, and not just a background check, since we were having that conversation with Hank earlier, what kind of background check? Because actually, in the ordinance, uh, it's not saying if it's a 50 state or it's a county. Uh, definitely, I believe that the background check should be a 50 state, the one that actually at the airport currently are doing and requiring is the 50 state background check. So this thing needs to stay in the ordinance. As far as the um, office location, uh, this is not something new. Actually, this is uh, something that exists in the city of Destin. If you'd like to have a business in the city of Destin right now, the code enforcement requires you to have a location. And actually, as far as I remember, it was only on uh, Azalea Street and Benning Drive, if I'm not uh, uh, wrong. I believe it's actually this thing that's been here for many years. It's not something new. Uh, it's up to you if you want to have this thing. Uh, personally, our company, we do have an office, and yes, it's very rare a customers to want to come to visit that office, but it happened. It happened a few times for over, over the years, so it's not something that it really needs to be, but it's up to you, and currently, actually, it's in the city. The city requires us to have an office if we are within the city of uh, Destin. As far as the age of the vehicles, uh, this is something that we did not just came up from somewhere. It's something that most of the biggest cities do have, and actually they have it for five years. So it's not 10 years, it's five years. 
you go to Vegas, you go to Seattle, you go to New York, you just see all those vehicles. Earlier, one of the gentlemen mentioned about an older vehicles like 1950s or something. There is a special requirement for those vehicles, and yes, they are allowed just because they are, uh, you know, with heritage and uh, they are fancy looking. So yes, uh, there is allowance for such a vehicles that are vehicles uh, as a retro vehicles, not a 1980 vehicle. Uh, such a vehicle would not be permitted, but yes, 1956 uh, old vehicle that it's a retro vehicle would be permitted in New York or uh, some of the other cities whenever they have such an ordinance. Uh, as far as those things, uh, pretty much this is what I want to say. Uh, and uh, the other thing uh, that I just wanted to add up, it's uh, there is no point of ordinance or just some kind of ordinance to make unless it's not effective. If it's not effective, it will backfire. Instead of to change the things, actually it will make them worse. So uh, uh, what I'm asking you is just to think uh, from all those opinions that you heard and think what is the best for the city of Destin, for the residents of Destin, but as well for the tourists, because actually Destin uh, is growing just because of the tourists. Uh, we shouldn't uh, forget that. If the tourists are not coming here, if the tourists are not happy uh, with the service that we're providing them in the vehicles that they are actually traveling and the people that are taking care of them, those people have many opportunities to go to any other place. Uh, pretty much this is what I would like to say. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay. Seeing that, thank you for your comments, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, Captain, um, we, is it something that's new? I don't want to recycle the wagons again, but is it? Just quickly. Okay. I think that in, in retrospect, one or two round table workshops with all of the stakeholders may be may be a good idea. Find out what's good for them, find out what's good for the city before all this becomes carved in stone. Okay. It wouldn't cost much and it wouldn't take much time. It might be a good idea and soothe over some ruffled feathers. Thank you, Captain. Appreciate it. Anyone else wish to speak for or against this ordinance? Okay, CNN will public, close the public portion, turn it over for City Council. First up was Ms. Ramswell. Thank you, Mayor. Thank all of you who were speaking, and boy, is it refreshing to actually have everyone in agreement on one thing, which is we need to have some sort of regulation. So I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that. Uh, I, I actually agree with a couple things that were brought up tonight, and I would like to present those or ask the, the staff to look into that. I agree with deleting the concept of having to have a destined address. I don't think that's, in my opinion, that's not necessary. Um, if you're gonna be operating a destined, as long as you have all the proper credentials and registration and you do have an address of some sort, I would think that'd be enough. I mean, we see enough of that. This, I think it was really eloquently put earlier. We have all sorts of folks, contractors of all sorts coming in and as long as they've done the proper registration and all that's necessary in that level, I don't think we need to have an additional layer of, of a destined physical address. Um, I'm torn on the 10 year car age. I, I can see the validity and older cars sometimes are absolutely fine. Um, you can also see sometimes five year old cars that are not functioning as they should and are certainly not the appearance they we would like. So I'm, I'm a little up in the air on that 10 year plan. Um, I am more in line with making sure that we do have them inspected, not necessarily having both, but I'll leave that up to my fellow council to discuss and, and listen to some further ideas. Um, I have a question for city manager and staff, and that is when we're looking at the enforcement of any regulations that we set into motion, how is that going to be handled? I didn't see any of that um, laid out at this time. As, as we stated in some of the earlier uh, memorandums, uh, we don't have, currently don't have city staff, so we're gonna need additional resources to be able to regulate this and do these inspections. So it's, I mean, we just don't have staff sitting around waiting for this assignment. And this is, to do it right is, is gonna be, um, uh, you know, somewhat intensive, you know, do the inspection, to do the background checks, um, 
make sure that you, you're validating the insurance and those types of things, uh, making sure the rates are you know collected, and um, and if they're out there charging rates, uh, then we're going to get complaints and we're going to have to follow up on those. So um, we don't know exactly you know if it's going to be a full-time position or a part-time position, but we will need additional staff to be able to administer this ordinance. Sure, I, I kind of envision this as another wing of our code enforcement, and similar to what we're discussing with short-term rentals, uh, the fees from short-term rentals actually serving to fund a dedicated officer. I, I don't know if we have any projections as to what sort of fees might be generated from the registration of the uh, taxi cab companies, but um, is that something that's been looked at or thought about? Yeah, I don't know how many companies are out there. Do Hank, do you have any idea? I mean, you know, when we looked at the uh, short-term rentals, there was, you know, we knew that we had about 600. We think we'll end up with about 750. Um, this, if you have 20 at $500, this is going to generate, you know, about $10,000. Wow. So this is not, you know, a lot. So. so we would need to allocate from elsewhere. You could, depending on how many companies would, would register. Okay. All right. Um, that's about all I have for right now, but um, I would like to direct staff to look at the tenure thing and based on what other council has to say and also the deletion of a destined address. That's just my own opinion. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Ramswell. Mr. Dixon? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to respectfully disagree with Ms. Ramswell. I, I, I am not in um, favor of, of more regulation. Um, in fact, I'm in favor of less regulation is the first thing. Not in so much specifically with the taxi cab companies, but basically in general. Um, the, the things that I saw through there, a clean driving record. A clean driving record, does that include a parking ticket? Or does that include two and a half years ago where somebody got a ticket for five miles an hour over the speed limit? So what are we talking there with, with a clean driving record? Um, an office in Destin, I, I don't think is it. I have n in no way um, should be required for this. Um, the safety inspections, who's doing the safety spe inspections and what are they actually inspecting? Unless we came up with the list of the items that they're supposed to be actually inspecting, I know what they're saying, the ASE, me ASE mechanic is going to do the inspections, but that mechanic is only going to inspect what he's told to inspect and these inspections need to be point specific in what they're actually inspecting. Um, um, who is going to do the enforcement? And I heard just a minute ago that we need another staff person to do this enforcement. And, and I absolutely tell you this right now, there is no way that I will ever vote to add a taxi inspector onto the Destin City, or to Destin City staff. There is no way. Um, so this needs a bunch of work. Um, I, I am never going to vote for this tonight, but I will tell you that that this would have to be softened up a lot before I would ever consider it. Another thing too is when we talk about cab, cab showing up with cardboard posted on the door, if you see a cab, don't get in it. It's a that simple. You don't have to ride in that cab. There is other things available out there. Do not get in it. If, and another thing too is not improper to ask about how much is it going to take to, to take me four miles down the road, and if they tell you it takes $50, don't get in it. Um, so, so, you know, I, and, and, and this really kind of got started where I guess an intoxicated person, which we want to make sure they do not drive, but got charged 40 or 50 bucks to go five miles down the road, and, and I'll say this, don't get quite as intoxicated. You might not pay quite as much. So, you know, that, that, is, that, is, that is one of the things that I wanted to say there. And, and, and uh, you know the, the 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 thing is is that I think that what we're doing is we're we keep pinning ourselves into a box, and and you know it, for, for this thing as I said to, for me to get to give my support to it it's going to have to soften up a lot and I know that probably I'm not going to get any applause in here for this but I'm certainly not willing to exclude the Uber and the Lyft drivers so plain and simple that's the way I feel about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Appreciate that. Next up, Ms. Trammell. Well, just so you know, Mr. Dixon, I was one of those that complained about the fee, and I was not drunk. It was 12 o'clock at the airport, and the guy showed up, and I had to take it because there were no other taxis available. And was I going to sit there and try to find a cab 
at midnight after I'd been through a tornado and <laughs> everything else on an airplane? The answer was no. But part of the reason was we were quoted a price on the phone. We got picked up, we got taken to our designa designation, and they wanted $30 more than we were quoted on the phone. Needless to say, there was an argument. We only paid what we were quoted. But I understand the aggravation. The second incident that personally came to me was from, believe it or not, a mechanic in this town who, when you take your car to drop it off, sometimes you do need a taxi to get you back to where you need to be. Called the taxi. And these people wanted to go to Subway from Mountain Drive and were charged $45. Subway's right here by airport, you know, on airport road. $45. Not only that, the people didn't have $45 in cash. They had to pay credit card, and this person had no way of taking that credit card. They had to call some other person and call the number out over the phone, which is giving it now to two people at the minimum to run a credit card. I don't want our citizens being stuck in that particular situation. So yes, some of these things that we're talking about here in this ordinance aren't going to fit. But if you don't have an ordinance to begin with, you can't add something to make it better for those situations. So I will say that I disagree with a physical location in Destin. But if we're looking at only companies that say Destin ca Taxi Company or whatever, then they ought to have a physical location in Destin, in my estimation. But a physical location doesn't necessarily have to be a building. It can be an address, just like all the other business licenses that we have in this town that are businesses that are run from their home if they only have one cab. If they have three cabs, then that's a different story if you're going to pile three cabs in your front yard. So I think that's... Um, uh, kind of situational when it comes to looking at those. I do look at the 50 year, uh, excuse me, 50 state background check that I think is done by the FBI, I believe, isn't it? Or the, I know at the school system we have to go through them to get it, but, um, and if the inspections are done in Pensacola, I think one of the things we need to do is do like we did for the low-speed vehicles here many years ago and send them to Panama City to get inspected because that was the nearest inspection place we had. Well, guess what? We had so many people going to Panama City, they said, let's open one in Destin. So they did. <laughs> Once every three months, they came to Destin to inspect the LSV. So uh, I think there's some good parts to that, too. Um, as far as the meters go, traditionally, whenever I go to any place, I get, I get in a taxi that has a meter. I think that's non-existent here in town, or at least no one advertises that they have meters. But as far as posting their rates, that would be one thing. And I'd like to see it before I get in, not on a sheet of notebook paper that's handed to me. I want it you know, done professionally, posted. Um, but when you're stuck in a situation where you have to have a cab and maybe you don't have the time to call three or four or five because you don't want to get in the first one, and I'm not by any means no, not inebriated, um, I'd like to know that who I'm calling is reputable. Now, I think some of our businesses have handled that by saying, here's a list of companies we would recommend, and I think they can eliminate a lot for you. But I think that's just one more thing a business is doing or has to do for their customers. So. I'm not sure I'm ready for this tonight to go to second reading, um, but I think we need to give staff a little more information on what to do. So I think in that, with that regard, um, I think if we, if we change the business, the, the taxi cab having a place of business in Destin, meaning a cement mort brick and mortar something or other, or an office, Maybe we should just say, uh, have an address, like we do with our tow trucks and a few of the other things that are here in town. Um, and then the background check, make sure it indicates on there the 50 state background check because people do things in other states and come to Florida, I guess. Um, and I do agree with Mr. Dixon with the certification. I'm not sure unless we tell a mechanic what we want certified that we get that done. 
We might look at Niceville if they're having certification and they're doing it over there, what they're looking at. Um, as far as the age of the vehicle, 10 years is okay with me, but I understand um, even probably the city has some vehicles that are 10 years old that don't have 100,000 miles on them, <laughs> but I may be wrong. So um, as far as school buses go, I don't think we look at, um, there is a rotation for school buses and it usually is 10 years and they age them out. With the recession, I know things all went a little differently. Um, but I, I do know with the school system that they do look at that. So I'm gonna stop now and see if there's anything else that anyone else uh, wants to give direction on. And I will ask council to either verify or, or say you don't agree with what I said so that staff knows whether they have a quorum on what to add. Or Mr. Mayor, if you wanna list all these down and then come up at the end and we'll look at it at that sure. point. You got to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Mayor. This may come as a shock to a lot of people, but there are a lot of military and commercial aircraft out there that are older than their pilots. And I think it's uh, the reason for that is clearly obvious. It's a high standard of maintenance. And that's the way they're able to operate all of their equipment that way. And I think to some degree, I hit. I, I sympathize, I don't think a 10 year or any number on a vehicle is so important as to the standard of maintenance on that vehicle. Now I know in some states, and they're considered backward states, they require vehicle inspections every year. And all they do is they certify a particular maintenance shop that can do the inspection and they let them charge $5 to do it and they give them the sticker and they put it on there and it's done. And so you have, a, you have some semblance of uh, control over the maintenance of that, that operation. Uh, I think the fact is, I didn't hear anybody here tonight except my esteemed colleague over here who said that they did not want regulation. They had different ideas about what it is, but I haven't heard anybody say you don't want it. So I think, and, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, we're talking about uh, probably everywhere else in the free world has some standards on, on taxi cabs and, uh, and has regulations that go with it. So I think this is our first cut at it and I think it's, from what I've read on there, I agree with a lot of it. I think there's a lot to be said for what's been done so far. And I think a lot of the, the comments that have been made tonight are, are appropriate about some fixes on what needs to be in it, but it needs to be tailored and we, we certainly, I look at it this way, if someone's in a taxi cab, they're not driving their own car. And, and that's very helpful to the situation here. So that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think we've just spent an hour talking about something we, we can't enforce. Um, I mean, we have things that are on our, this code enforcement. <coughs> that's just overwhelmingly that we can't enforce now, we have trouble with. I mean, every 90% of the problems that we have in this town always comes back to code enforcement. Um, with that said, I don't, I don't think we really need a business location um, or even an address. Um, I mean, you have people like Web Seafood that come from Apalachicola and deliver seafood, and they pick seafood up and take it back to Apalachicola. <coughs> they don't have to have an address in Destin. Um, you got Navarre Lumber, they bring lumber to Destin, take lumber back to Navarre. Um, they don't have an address, so I, th I think that's just a huge waste of time. Um, the $500, I think that's just a lot of money. I hate to see the guys had to pay $500 here and who knows what in Fort Walton, Niceville, Crestview, Valpy, wherever. Um, I, the only thing I would like to see is we have a something on the appearance of the vehicle. Um, I, don't, I don't like knowing that our visitors are being picked up in something with shag carpet and dice hanging from the mirror. Um, as far as the age, I'm not concerned about the age because it's like I say, you can have a vehicle that's 15 years old that's, that's better shape than one that's three years old, how you take care of it. Um, but I think other than, you know, 
more importantly, <coughs> or as, as as importantly as the roadworthiness is uh, the appearance of a vehicle. Um, but I hope we, I really hope we don't waste a whole lot of time on this. I mean, I want to get out of the taxi cab business. Um, I don't think we need to be in it. Um, I'm sure there's some things we need to touch on, you know, but that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Braden. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'm probably pretty close to toughy on this. I'm glad I didn't have to follow you. Nice job, young man, on your, on your speech there. So, you know, I've, I've seen some studies that says we in Florida have the most rules in government of any state, yet we have the most corrupt government of any state. Now, how can that be? What it means is you can have lots of rules, but if you don't enforce them, it doesn't do anything. We have lots of discussions here over the last couple of years or months, whether it's code enforcement or lots of other issues where if you don't enforce it, lots of rules don't do you a whole lot of good. Now, there are lots of this that I do like. I guess the question for me is, where do you base the rules from? I believe we have 11 municipalities here in Oklahoma County. We have an airport that already has a set of rules. Do you try to standardize the rules across the county, or do you have 11 municipalities all with their own rules? Or, and then what does that cause for taxi drivers when, you got, when you've got 11 lines you can't cross without paying more or less? That's a lot of details. Now, I mean, I, most states I've lived in have vehicle inspection. This is the first state I've ever lived in that didn't, didn't have vehicle inspections. And, you know, when I was in the military, unfortunately, one year, a soldier got killed, went on leave with his family, crashed his car. Of course, the military being the autocratic society that it is, and a commander can say, you will do something and you will do it. We were told we will do vehicle inspections from now on. We will check every soldier's car and you will not leave town until it's checked and either one of my sergeants or me will sign that inspection and if that soldier has a wreck the first thing that the first general officer in the chain of command is going to do in the death review board is pull out your sheet you signed and say you signed it what happened and at that point you're playing bet your career and we had to be trained as minor mechanics to be able to do that kind of thing and nobody was ever comfortable inspecting cars unless you were a mechanic. Because you, you're, 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 you're betting your career at that time if it uh, goes wrong. I have had the fortunate opportunity to attend a couple of DUI checkpoints that uh, the Oakland County Sheriff has run here in town. Every time we've done one of those that I've been at, every taxi that comes through has issues. No driver's license, no registration, no insurance. Now, they may have it, but it's not on them. It's back at the office, wherever the office is at. And I believe those are producible on demand by law enforcement. So very simple things that are already in the rules we can't even do. Uh, you know, coming from that military background, I like standards. But I think it will be better, kind of like our transit co-op that we did, where all the municipalities worked together and came up with one set of standards, this ought to be worked the same way, which means you probably will have to decrease the number of things to get everybody to agree, pick out the, 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 the most important three to five things that will make the biggest impact, have everybody agree, and then do that. I'd much rather do that than have Destin do our own, and Fort Walton do their own, and the airport has theirs, and none of them are the same. Uh, if you could come to some kind of agreement like that, I'm perfectly willing to support it. Uh, I'm not sure that I can support this as it's written. Uh, a lot of the details have already been discussed, uh, and I will leave it at that right now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Wood. Mr. Dixon, before we get to you, uh, Mr. Cassell had a comment. Yeah, I just want to report that I, um, the city manager in Fort Walton and myself have had preliminary conversations with the county administrator about doing having something done countywide. Uh, so the airport does it now, um, you know, for anybody that transports on the airport property. Um, and the county administrator is, um, has agreed to at least uh, study the issue. Um, and we had a meeting this Thursday and I can bring it up to him again and ask if that's something he was interested in. But, um, and that's the complaint that I've heard from some of the industry members was the, um, if, 
if uh, Fort Walton does something different than what Destin does, and then you got Niceville and Crestview and all these different cities, it get very difficult to, to operate. Thank you, Mr. Casella. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Dixon? Uh, yeah, I, uh, just a couple of more comments, and I know we kind of hit on this, this how old this 10-year thing on the, uh, on the vehicles, but I drive, I work part-time for the State Fire Marshal's Office, and I drive a 2006 um, truck that has 52,000 miles on it. Now, that's basically almost an average of 5,000 miles a year. So I, I, I'm just saying that, that the, the age of the vehicle really means nothing to compared to what, how much use it's had and everything else, so I, I, I can't go there. Uh, and then another thing, too, is we talked about rates and how this kind of got started with rates and maybe a drunk passenger or whatever it may be with the rates, but there's no rates in here. I mean, this has got this, this, this really, really no rates in here. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, uh, deny this, and um, if at a future date, some sometime in the future, that that um, somebody comes together and 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 works some stuff out to bring back to us, uh, that'd be fine. But but I'm going to make a motion now to deny this or to not support. This. Okay, Mr. There's a first by Mr. Dixon. Uh, to just Mayor, flat could I, Mr. Miller, yes. Could I get, give you some guidance? Uh, sure. Uh, a motion to adopt an ordinance fails on its own weight. Uh, there is no denial motion. So, uh, you know, if there's not a sponsor for this and a second, then you you, you move on to your next item. All right. Good Take it back. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Appreciate that. Anything else, Mr. Dixon? Okay. Mr. Marler? Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of quick things. Um, I have a 10 year old vehicle it's 65,000 and I'm still hanging in there so I have I, I do have a heartburn with a 10, 10, 10 year because some vehicles with proper maintenance can last you 20 years if you're good at it the other things that came to mind with me is um, somebody mentioned plumbers and electricians well plumbers and electricians since I've worked for both over my years are also licensed by the state and that brings up the other issue if they work work in this in the county they have to be li they have to have the county license just as well as we do a city license I learned this my myself from purchasing a service business not long ago that uh, that I that my wife and I own and so I have both a county a county license tax permit if you want to call it that as well as a city permit and tax and a city address in the city of Destin for for that business which is my home which is allowed so that alone would help us in one regulation. What I'm getting at is, is if they are licensed and if they have a Okaloosa County license tax, then that would be a way to get around having the address physically in Destin. The other thing that comes to mind with me is when somebody brought up sex offenders and background checks. That's, that, that, is, that is something that we have to look at because I think I certainly don't want a family member male or female riding in a cab with somebody that's not even supposed to have contact with those people so that's that's another thing and the last thing i bring up is that we did we have a similar ordinance for tow trucks and and i know that sounds funny but we are to not give a our visitors or our locals a bad taste in their mouth if your vehicle gets towed in the city of destin first you have to have a registered a tow truck that's registered to operate in the city of destin plus they must keep the vehicle within the city limits are right outside the city limits. They can't go across the bridge to Fort Walton because then they're going to try to charge you an arm and leg, and we kind of regulated that. So I don't have a problem with trying to have some sort of regulation with what we have here. The And Mr. Wood brought up vehicle inspections. I grew up about the time I turned driver's age. We used to have those old wonderful vehicle inspections, and you took it to Preston Hood or one of the car dealers, and they did a five-point check, slapped a sticker on it, and you were good for another year, and somebody got the money. I don't know who it was, whether it was the state or the or them so that's going to be a big problem and my last issue is watching um, I almost wanted to say when Mr. Wu said about the uh, van where we're shaggy and Scooby but <laughs> we'll go there later but um, regulations as far as vehicle registration I've, I've I actually got passed yesterday on airport road by a taxi cab going at least according at least uh, over, over the 35 minutes in the speed limit, and it said city taxi on it. It didn't say Destin or anything, and I have to agree that if it says Destin on it, it should be registered in the city of Destin, and because, you know, that's the way we have a brand, and it's called Destin. 
and I think, you know, and Uber was brought up, and I agree, we need to watch it for Uber too. So with that, I mean, I just think this ordinance needs to go back and have some fine-tuning done to it before I think I could vote for, for totally. All right, thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Ms. Ramswell? Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I'd like to make sort of a modified version of this motion, do we still have to make the original motion first? Well, I, I'd suggest if, if you're going to craft some amendment, uh, any council member who desires to craft any amendment, uh, if, if you've not done that in writing on your own, that you utilize the staff resources to assist you in preparing what you intend or desire to sponsor. Uh, we've regularly uh, had uh, sponsors step up on uh, matters such as this, and the staff used to sponsor before. Uh, I don't recollect that that's occurred with this particular regulation proposal. If it has, I just don't know who it is, but uh, uh, I'd suggest that you'd work with the staff. And if you take no action tonight, you just took no action tonight, uh, and you moved on to your next item. Because uh, it's obviously, uh, this particular draft isn't ready for, for you to uh, consider passage. So it sounds then like the proper... I mean, you're, yeah, you are legislators. Come in here with legislation proposed to make the amendments you desire is my guidance to you okay um uh, okay well with that being said i guess what i would like to do is to direct staff to take into consideration the comments that have been made tonight and bring us something back at a later date it's, it's, you know, we can do that um uh, is I guess I'm not hearing, I'm sensing a split council on this. Do we want to regulate? I mean, do we want to regulate <laughs> or do we, as you mentioned before, you're already working with Mr. Beatty and the county, or do we want to let that kind of filter its way out and that it come with some sort of countywide proposal, which would kind of streamline things and let them make the decision? Well, but I, I think it's important to have our input in, I mean, and not just well, sort of wait on a, what they're doing. And that would go to every city having its own uh, deal. Wait a second. I'll go ahead real quick. So I got some other people. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. The fact that the other entities, the county and but. the fact that the other entities in the county and all have some regulation in place doesn't mean that we don't need one. I mean, the fact is, I think we have tonight said some things which are uh, somewhat confusing, maybe opposed to each other, have problems with them, and I think, but we, but we do have a reason. Suppose a company sets up to operate only within the city limits of Destin. Are we expecting the county to do that? Are we expecting Mary Esther to do that? Or what are we gonna do? You know, the point is it needs to be cleared up. And like I said before, I haven't heard a spokesman here tonight, except one, who didn't say that they wanted some sort of regulation. So I think we need to offer that. You know, let, me, let me offer some clarity because I believe, and Hank, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you did the research on this. Fort Walton do, currently does not have an ordinance, okay? I, under, I don't know what Crestview does, okay? I know that the airport regulates, and I heard tonight that I guess Niceville regulates to a certain degree. So what I'm proposing is that let me explore working with the county to see if they're comfortable in adopting a countywide regulation that would be applicable to all municipalities. I think I'm hearing there's a, if we regulate, you want to move away from the location of their business not necessarily being in Destin. You're not hung up on the age of the vehicle as long as that it is safe uh, and you would like to see the rates posted so a, a, a customer understands what the, what, what the rates would be when they get in the vehicle. And then making sure that it is the signs on it and that kind of thing. So if the county is willing to do that countywide, that may be a better solution because I don't want to mislead anybody. This is, if there's 20, 30, 40 companies, this is going to be resource oriented and we're not going to be able to do this with existing staff. And if 
if the county can do it with, and they're doing it right now at the airport, my understanding, and that what you told me, Mr. White, that they're currently inspecting the vehicles, doing the background checks, doing everything that we would be currently doing. So they're doing it. So, you know, why do we need to duplicate it? That's all I'm saying, so. Thank you, Mr. Cassell. I would like to kind of get, bring this thing to a head. We can, Ms. Trammell, you're up first, and then Mr. Wood, and then Mr. Dixon, Ms. Ramswell. Ms. Trammell? I was just going to make the motion to have Mr. Casella work with the uh, county manager and any other cities that wanted to get involved to see if we couldn't do something countywide, at least have a preliminary uh, ordinance that would cover everybody, similar to what they have at the airport. Um, Second. Okay, we have first by Ms. Ramswell. I'm sorry. Ms. Tram one second by Mr. Wood that's basically directing Mr. Casella to work with the county and come back with a revised ordinance. Thank you. Could, could I Miller? clarify for you, if the county does have the authority to exercise jurisdiction over the entire county, including within the municipalities. So I think it's an important distinction there between whether you want the county, a county ordinance to apply to the city and all the cities or whether you want it to come back so that you attempt some duplication because they've excluded you. That's an important distinction. I, what I've heard you say is, is if the county's willing to do it. Yes, if the county's willing to do the things that you mentioned, the inspections and, and all that, then I think we can piggyback on that and say we're going to go along with it if that comes back to us. But Mr. Casella now knows what we told him and he can talk to the county to see how we want to approach this and come back to us. We don't know what we want right now. Yeah, you, you, put us, you, put, you put the council right back in the hole I've tried to help you out of. Um, do you want the county to consider regulating taxi cabs countywide? Yes. yes. That's not the motion you were trying to make. Okay. That's the motion I wanted. So you want to... I'll re-second that. So what, what can you, Mr. Bant, what's the motion? The motion is that Mr. Casella work with county staff and any other municipalities that Based want on to get county involved initiative. Uh, okay. to come up with a countywide initiative to regulate. But yet reserve the right if we want to do something different, we can. Yes. Okay. Mr. Wood, is that your second? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Dixon, okay, so uh, Ms. Maramsel, do you have a discussion on this or you want to wait after the no, vote, see? Okay, good. All right, we have a first by Ms. Trammell, second by Mr. Wood. Let's call the vote. Mr. Dixon? Right. Mr. Foreman? I'm pushing. <laughs> that motion passes six to one. Okay. All right, Ms. Costello, you feel like you got your... I do. Good. All right. We are going to take a five minute break and pick back up on item number five.
go ahead and find our seats. Mr. Moody, you're in charge the rest of the night. <laughs> you and Matt. So and Nancy will be all set. All right, could go and call the meeting back to order, please. Item number five. For Thank you, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Ms. Trammell's on her way. All right, go ahead. Item number five, first reading of ordinance 15-08-LC, which amends the city's land development code by adopting amendments to address outdated and inadequate enforcement of unsafe building abatement code regulations. Mr. Miller, please read by title. Yes, sir. Ordinance number 15-08-LC by title is an ordinance of the city of Destin, Florida, relating to unsafe building abatement and abatement of buildings and dwellings which do not meet minimum standards of habitability, providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for purpose, providing for an amendment to the Land Development uh, Code Article 20, Building Regulations, Sections 20.01.00 through 20.06.01, providing for the repeal of Land Development Code Section 20.06.02, Standard Housing Code 1994 edition adopted, providing for the repeal of Land Development Code Section 20-06, excuse me, 20.06.03, Housing Board of Adjustments and Appeals, the same as Board of Adjustment, providing for the repeal of Land Development Code Section 20.06.04, Standard Unsafe Building Abatement Code 1985 edition adopted, providing for the repeal of Land Development Code Section 20.06.05 definition, providing for the creation of a new Land Development Code Section 20.06.00 Unsafe Building Abatement General, providing for the creation of a new Land Development Code Section 20.06.01 definitions providing the, for the creation of a new land development code section 20.06.02, determination of unsafe building, providing for the creation of a new land development code section 20.06.03 notice, providing for the creation of a new land development code section 20.06.04, additional powers and duties of the building and fire officials, providing for the creation of a new land development code section 20.06.05 code enforcement hearing, providing for the creation of a new land development code section 20.06.06 method of demolition or repair, providing for an amendment of the code of ordinance chapter 6 buildings and building regulations section 6-47 administrative amendments to the Florida building code providing for conflicting provisions, providing for incorporation into the Land Development Code and the Code of Ordinances, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. The ordinance is before you on consideration for first reading. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Mr. Cassell, a little background, please, sir. Yeah, what this basically does is streamline the, uh, the process. It shifts it from the Board of Adjustments to the uh, Code Enforcement process with the Special Magistrate uh, it allows us to more expeditiously move through these issues. Uh, this has been to the uh, LPA. It was endorsed 5-0, to 0, and we'd ask for your uh, consideration of this on first reading. Thank you, Mr. Casella. This is a public hearing, so would any, any member of the public wish to come forward to speak for or against this ordinance on first reading? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion, turn it over to City Council discussion or direction. First up, Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. I want to make the recommended motion. I move the City Council approve the proposed ordinance 15-08-LC on first reading and direct staff to schedule proposed ordinance 15-08-LC for final adoption on second reading. Second. second. Thank you, Mr. Braden. I think Mr. Dixon was quicker on the draw for the second, although Ms. Tram was pretty close. Uh, discussion, uh, Mr. 
Okay, Mr. Chairman, do you have discussion? Are you want to second? Okay. Then Mr. Dixon, do you have discussion or just one minute? Okay. So we have a first uh, by Mr. Braden, a second by Mr. Dixon. Is there any discussion? I got it. Mr. Marley? Since Noelle is sitting there, I wanted to ask her a question. What, what's our criteria for deciding it's unsafe? I'm trying to read it in here and it didn't. I mean, you gotta, you're going to go physically in. And I remember, it, like, if it's a hurricane or something, we said if it was over 50%, it was not uh, livable or something. The, um, yes, uh, Mr. Marler, the, uh, in Section 10 of the ordinance on page 4 of 11, okay. uh, begins that's, to be, uh, that's the definition of unsafe building. Okay. And that gives a long laundry list in there. Um, a lot of those uh, items are standard items within the well-understood definition of unsafe building. Um, a lot of those are borrowed directly from the standard unsafe building abatement code, and there are a few in there that we've added in uh, to the definition of unsafe building. So um, a, a building that is damaged by a storm event could trigger any of these uh, conditions if, if it was left unattended for any significant period of time at all uh, before being abated somehow, either by uh, demolition or by uh, boarding up or by repair uh, within short order. Okay. okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you, Mr. Marler. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a first by Mr. Braden, second by Mr. Dixon. Let's call the vote. Motion passed unanimous, seven to zero. Okay, moving right, uh, next up is public opportunity to speak on council propositions six through 22. So if any member of the public wishes to speak on those items, uh, you can come forward now. You also have a chance at the end uh, to speak, from, com speak it from comments from the audience. So if you miss something now, you can speak at the end. But if you wish to speak now, please come forward. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public opportunity to speak until later in the evening. Next up, consent agenda, uh, council dis discussion and direction, motion? Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Ramsel is the first, Mr. Dixon is the second. Is there any discussion? Uh, I'm Trammell? assuming we meet all of them? Yes. 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 Okay, is that motion? Second? Yes, okay, that's cool. the motion. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, let's call the vote. Ms. Trammell? Motion passes uh, six to one. Okay. Next up, uh, project reports and comments from Mayor and Council. First up, Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I wanted to uh, thank all the public um, works that were out uh, during the flooding. Um, they were out there majority of the night um, and they did a, a, a terrific job and I just wanted to say hats off to them. Uh, oh yeah, this got a story. You, <laughs> you can't make this kind of stuff up. I went to the seafood festival Friday night. Um, wearing, actually wearing the same shirt. Um, walking around doing a little PR work for the city, thanking our vendors and volunteers and stuff. I went to the VIP tent. Matter of fact, I talked to Mr. Woods for a few minutes there. I was asked to sign in, but my name wasn't on the list. So they called the individual running the seafood festival. I said, they were all the VIP passes were handed out. There were no more. So I was more or less asked to leave, you know, politely. <laughs> Seriously, can't make that up. <laughs> so I did, instead of, you know, saying, really, are you serious? I can't walk in here and sit down and, you know, rest for a few minutes or thank our vendors or volunteers? Oh no, I was asked to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be a good one for you, Matt. Destin City Council member asked to leave. <laughs> Secret <laughs> Festival VIP area. Other than that, I guess it was all right. It uh, seemed like there was a lot of people down there, and other than a rain party night. But that's all I've got, Mayor. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Braden. Appreciate it. Ms. Ramswell? Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to start off and by saying that my thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Deputy Myers, as well as our Sheriff's Department. I know it was a very difficult time for law enforcement and all of our first responders. And with that being said, also, now we've got the victims from the shooting in Oregon. So um, thoughts and prayers to everybody affected. Um, I also attended the Seafood Festival 
it was exceptionally crowded, which was nice to see. And I have to say, I was a little disappointed. I kept looking around for Councilman Wood to be directing traffic or otherwise, and either I missed him or he somehow managed to blend into the crowd. But um, I too wanted to thank um, Public Services, Public Works uh, for all the hard work during the flood. I live in Indian Bayou and we were, I think, one of the hardest hit this time back in the back. And boy, they were hard at work until the wee hours in the morning. So thanks to them as well. That's all I have. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Ramswell. Next up, Mr. Dixon. Uh, yes. Um, other than um, what Mr. Mr. Councilmember Braden experienced, I, I will say that that from all out outward appearances that the uh, Seafood Festival was a hit. Um, I'd like to thank all the volunteers that that make that possible. Um, uh, there's so much time spent um, on, on this, and, and it is a great thing for Destin. And um, I just want to thank everybody uh, that that volunteered to, to help with this. Um, also, uh, I wanted to, to show my sympathy for the Sheriff's Office in their time uh, with losing uh, uh, Deputy Myers. Um, his son actually uh, worked for me at the fire department and was a, is a lieutenant there and a, a, very, uh, a very good person. And, and I just hate that for the whole family and the Sheriff's Office family and the emergency services family. And um, I am uh, uh, keeping them in my thoughts and prayers for uh, forever. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Foreman. Yes, Mayor. I agree with all of what was said before. I won't say it again. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Mr. Marler. Uh, I agree with all the things that said about the Sheriff's Department, the Myers family, and all of our first responders. And uh, kudos to the city for their fast response on the flooding and also their help in uh, the seafood festival. I did not attend the actual festival. I got to see all the fun stuff putting it together. And I will say that this year it went a lot faster. There was a lot of people put together, uh, had their stuff in there. And the one good thing about it was, although the, it was scheduled at 4 p.m. to start, the people, at, you know, they were already serving, believe it or not, at lunchtime. And uh, so that, I can't, and I mean, there were crowds down there at noon on Friday, Friday, uh, Friday when they started. So I think that's good. And the only other thing I've got is that, uh, you know, I'm just glad that we have a very productive city council and productive uh, city staff. And I think now that we've had Mr. Casella for over a year now, I want to just say I'm glad he's back and he's been doing wonderful for us again. That's all I got here. Here, thank you, Mr. Marler, Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. I've got two things tonight, and I was down at the Seafood Festival for multiple hours. If you were, uh, my job this year was changed a little bit from past years. If you remember, I was usually at Fisherman's Wharf in the parking lot for about 16 hours a day. Now I'm a roving parking guy, not a static parking guy. So it's kind of nice to get out and walk around. So, but I want to. Yeah, this was our 37th annual uh, Seafood Festival, and I'd like to thank a number of folks here, if I could, please. The Destin Chart Boat Association for continuing the fine tradition of the Seafood Festival for 37 years now. The 11 harbor property owners who gave their space to let that uh, event happen. Our plethora of vendors, many who are repeat uh, participants. Our sponsors and support agencies, and there are so many of those I couldn't list them all. To our, I think on our website, we talked about 70,000 visitors last year. I'm sure we were probably pretty close to that. There was a lot of folks I think the cooler weather helped us out a little bit. Folks in the city of Destin, uh, Lisa Firth, uh, Keith Nelson, doing volunteer work and power work down on the harbor, and the guys that got all the trash cans out of the way so we don't get complaints about overflowing trash cans, and all the wonderful folks in the Oakland County Sheriff's Office Posse Unit, commanded by Captain Terry Watkins, who I believe has worked all 37 festivals, I believe. So, wow. Uh, Finally, I'd like to point out some folks, some local folks who usually don't get uh, uh, identified kind of behind the scenes. These are kind of what I'll call the, the core group that helps put the festival together. Starting with the festival chairperson, Jamie Jones and her husband, Casey, Kathy and Captain Mike Eller, Captain Dave Boudreau, Captain Jimmy Green, Lindley Staples, John L. Bell, Kurt Gwynn, TJ George and Dean Burns. They put in a lot of hours uh, making this thing look good for the citizens of Destin, and they always do a great job. So cheers to all of them for a job well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second item is the City Youth Council. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we've had a City Youth Council for, I forget when uh, we started under Mayor Seaver's administration, 
Uh, every year we've had, uh, I guess, 10 to 14 members. We try to have two per council member, which would equal 14. Right now we only have five resumes so far for the youth council this year. So we don't even have a quorum of resumes yet. Uh, so I'd like to ask if you're out there in TV land and have high school kids of that age that need volunteer hours, they would like to learn about government, uh, they would like to uh, craft or help craft kids' issues here in Destin before the city council on occasion. If you want to learn leadership skills, organizational skills, and good, bad, or indifferent, learn about government from a practical perspective, not just in the classroom. Uh, on our website, you can either contact our clerk, Ray Bailey, or call or email me. I will get you a, a uh, application. I'd love to see the youth council go. Right now it's on hiatus because we just don't have enough folks. Uh, my daughter did it for three years. She got 36 hours of volunteer credit, which went toward Bright Futures, another scholarship that she got to go to the University of Alabama. So uh, please, uh, if you have kids out there that need those kind of time and want to do it, please contact the city. Let's get more folks on our youth council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Ms. Trammell? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will echo all of your comments about the Seafood Festival. I thoroughly enjoyed it all the days that I went. Um, I guess I was one of the few people that actually heard the mayor wrap it into session. <laughs> Some place you're he did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, Officer Meyer's funeral, and I will tell you that's the first funeral I've ever attended of a, of a um, first responder. And it was so moving and so poignant, but I was blown away by the number of people there in support. It took me an hour and 20 minutes to get out of the parking lot because of the procession line. I was amazed. We should all be so thankful to every one of them. Um, and I did not realize that representatives from all the states in the United States attend. They send first responders to every death. Mm -hmm. I never knew that, but when half the auditorium is filled up from other states, uh, I think you saw the uh, picture in the paper that uh, NYPD was there and several other states. Even on their horses, I was wondering how they were going to get all the way to the beach, but they did put them in a trailer. <laughs> I was happy for that. Um, Mr. Wood, you'll be glad to know that uh, being an advisory board member of Destin Middle School, they're initiating a student government over there. So hopefully we'll have some middle schoolers moving up into the high school that understand a little bit about government and how it works, and maybe we'll get some more applicants for that. Uh, and lastly, I have the nomination of Mrs. Teresa Hebert to the Environmental Parks and Recreation Committee Tree Board. And I'd like y'all to notice her resume. It's the first time in sitting up here for almost eight years I've ever gotten a full, complete resume. <laughs> it's usually just fill in the blanks. I was just telling her I'm real proud of that. So. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. Second by Mr. Wood, first by Ms. Trammell. Is there any discussion for Ms. Hebert? Seeing none, let's call the vote. Motion passed you seven to zero. Congratulations. Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Uh, no reason to repeat everything. Obviously, Seafood Festival is great. I was down there. Jamie, of course, I agree with you, Mr. Wood. Her and her team did an amazing job. Uh, Captain Peco arranged for me to ride around with the deputy um, the night of the flood because city staff was so busy. And um, uh, the Sheriff's Department was crackerjack there on top of it. The city staff was on top of it. And I think by getting ahead of it, Thanks to Mr. Cassell's leadership, um, I think that we're in, in a little favor from the good Lord above to kind of slow the rains down around 9.30 or 10. Now uh, we stayed ahead of it, so, um, and it all worked out. I mean, with, with, with the exception of Heritage Run and any Bayou City staff did an amazing job, and so job well done. Um, I was with, with Ms. Trammell at the funeral. It was a very sad and moving event, but also uplifting at the same time, but uh, a lot of pride you can have in, in your sheriff's department and to see the folks come from around the country is amazing and just amazing so uh, that's all i have uh this evening next up staff reports and recommendations first up mr miller i have no items thank you thank you mr miller next up mr shirley uh, mr shirley's left oh but... sorry left the building uh, thank you mr shirley uh, 
And item number 21, uh, first reading of ordinance 15-13-CN, modifying the city of Destin city council election date in 2016 to coincide with the 2016 presidential primary election. Mr. Casella. Yeah, this item is being presented to you um, at the request of the supervisor of elections is to move the um, 2016 Arm 2016 municipal election uh, from the second Tuesday in March to the, uh, I believe it's the third Tuesday in March to uh, March 15th. So uh, this is would coincide with the presidential uh, preference primary uh, election that's held in 2016. So we would ask for your consideration of this, this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Costello. First up, Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make the recommended motion. I move that the city council adopt ordinance 15-13-CN on first reading and advertise for second reading and public hearing on Monday, October 19, 2015. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wood. First by Ms. Wood, a second by Ms. Trammell. Mayor, may I read the title, please? Yes. Oh, you know what? I, it, sorry about that, Mr. Miller. Please right. read by title before we make the motion again. Okay. Thank well, you, Mr. Your motion will stand, but uh, by title, Ordinance 15-13CN is an ordinance of the City of Destin, Florida relating to Election Day providing for authority, providing for findings of fact, providing for modifying the 2016 City of Destin City Council Election Day, providing the election day for council members to be held to coincide with the presidential preference primary election in March 2016, providing for the qualifying period for the municipal election in 2016 to be January 4, 2016 through January 8, 2016, providing for termination of existing and commencement of future city council member terms, providing for conflicting provisions, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. The ordinance is before you for consideration on first reading. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you for catching me on that. We have a first and a second. Mr. Braden, you still have discussion? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, so, uh, Supervisor Election, he's the one that's asking for this? Yes, he, uh, that we attached a letter from, and this would put us in sync with the uh, pr presidential primary. And we do this every four years. Right. Um, every other election is held uh, in conjunction with the presidential pr preference primary. But in this case, when they change the, uh, the election dates, um, we are allowed by statute to change ours to coincide with any uh, presidential election, and to do so will save us $10,000, so it's to our advantage to do so. So this comes around basically every four years? Yeah. Right, right. Every other election every other for election. us. Yeah. I got you. But it's a big savings for the city to do so. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Braden. We have a first and a second. Is there any more discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's call the vote. Motion passed unanimous, seven to zero. Item number 22, city manager comments. Yeah, just a reminder on a couple of things. Next week at 5.30, we have the Envision uh, Dustin uh, session. It's, uh, it's, it is the, uh, you'll see hopefully either either Wednesday or Thursday, the um, revisions, the, the rewrites of chapter one of the uh, comprehensive plan, which is consistent. The, the big picture things, the, the tiering, the, the height, the uh, total FAR, all of that will be consistent with what you discussed in the um, August time frame. Uh, and I've, they've now memorialized that and put that into the chapter one. So you'll see that um, we have uh, asked to, to, to keep this on target so that we can get it to the LPA in November and subsequently back to you uh, in for first reading in early December we're asking you to hold, uh, if we need it, we, we may not, but I think we may need another session. We're asking to hold Tuesday at 5.30, uh, a second session for Envision Destin that we can work through any issues that we can't work out on the uh, Monday the 12th. So if you can do that for us, that would be helpful. Um, the um, reminder, the uh, ORAC uh, restore um, the, um, Board of County Commissioners is taking that issue up on the Tuesday the 13th at one o'clock. Uh, we've got the open house scheduled for the, uh, the 22nd. 
that starts at the community center at 1130. Um, and I just want to echo up what everybody said. You know, the crews work really hard. I know a number of you elected officials were out on Monday evening helping individuals that got impacted by a storm. I think Mr. Braden even offered to loan us one of his pumps and it was a little bit undersized, but we appreciate that. So um, it was 12, 13 inches of rain in a very short period of time. So uh, uh, we appreciate everybody you know, working with us. And the good news is both the areas that were severely impacted by the storm are areas that we have you know, either a federal grant or state appropriation to address in the next 12 months. So we're in, in good shape there. So that's all I have, Mayor, uh, for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Cassell. Mr. Wood, do you have a comment? Sure. Question I forgot earlier, Greg. What's the we didn't get to talk on Monday morning. What's what's the current status of the beach alcohol stuff for spring break from the county? Um, we've got a draft from the uh, the county. Uh, it was sent over to the sheriff's office to scope out, and I'm hoping to have it back to you within the next 30 days. An interlocal agreement between the city and Oklahoma County as it relates to a basically a countywide agreement because what we don't want to do is transfer one problem from the island to Destin, from Destin to the island. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mr. Casella. Okay, last up, uh, comments from the audience. Any member, uh, as I said before, wish to speak on any item, you have uh, by regulation five minutes to speak. And so it's now open for anyone who would like to come forward and speak at, uh, at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion. This meeting is adjourned.